down the village all right, sir. <laughs> yes, it's a pretty long way, though. A mile, they say. Yes, and they don't say too much. <laughs> My uncle gone fishing already? Yes, sir. I'm afraid you'll find it's a very clear morning. Well, oh, that doesn't matter. He had a pretty thick night. <laughs> Oh, I'm glad you found it nice and quiet here, sir, the first night. Oh, very. After all, this cottage is miles from anywhere, isn't it? Yes, sir. Except, of course, for the house over there. Oh, but this cottage has nothing to do with that house, has it? Oh, no, sir. This cottage, you see, is let from time to time for the fishing. Like you and your uncle have took it now. Oh, yes, sir. And you stay here and housekeep all the time? Yes, sir. <laughs> yes. Who lives in that house? Oh, that belongs to Mr. Rivers, a London gentleman. Wow. He comes down odd times. Oh, is he? Is he, uh, is he there now? Yes, sir. At least ways, I expect he's out fishing. Hmm. Is he, uh, does he live there alone? No, sir. He's got his wife and daughter here with him. Ah, his wife and daughter, eh? Pretty, uh, pretty elderly people, I suppose. Oh, no, sir. Why, Mrs. Rivers, she's fairly young. And a very nice-looking lady, too. Uh, is that so? Well, well, well. <laughs> yeah, it's a pity to waste a lovely morning like this. I think I'll go for a stroll. Hmm. Where does that path lead to? That's the shortcut leading straight through to Mrs. Rivers' house, sir. Oh, <laughs> is it? Well, I don't want to go there, do I? <laughs> no, of course not. <laughs> Still, you never know. <laughs> oh, thank you, sir. Are you the gentleman that's come to stay at the cottage? Yes, I'm the gentleman. My uncle's there, too. Uh, you're Mrs. Rivers, aren't you? Yes. Why? Oh, I don't know why. <laughs> don't you? Is there anything you wanted? No, just a stroll down the path. <laughs> I see. But if you don't mind, I am in my garden. Oh, no, no, I don't mind, not at all. <laughs> in fact, I'm, I'm very glad you are. Yes, but you're in it, too. Oh, am I? Yes, I am. That's right. <laughs> yes, you don't seem to understand. I'm trying to convey something to you. Oh, you don't have to try. No fear. <laughs> that housekeeper was quite right. Why? What did she say? She said you were young and beautiful. Really? Is that why you stroll? Rather. You blame me? No. But what I meant was, you can't walk in here and do just what you like. No, 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 of course not. No, well, I mean, you know, not right bang off real. <laughs> no, you don't understand. Look, yeah. halfway down that path yeah. is your limit. Oh, good. Well, let's go to the limit. What? Well, I mean, I mean, won't you uh, show me the way to the limit? you will want. You've no right there, sir. None whatever. Oh? And what are you? A gamekeeper or the local public nuisance or what? My name is River. I happen, sir, to own this part of the stream. Oh, no, you don't. I've just rented that cottage and the fishing along with it. So minnows to you. Yes, I heard the cottage has been let to some person. Person? By God, if we're going to start calling each other names, I warn you, because I'm very good at it. If you'd examined your lease, sir, you'd have known that your fishing rights extended only to that post. Are you trying to suggest that I'm trespassing? I tell you, sir, you're poaching. Well, I may have committed a trifling error, but there's no occasion for us to be rude to each other. Because I don't like your manner any more than I like your face, and I can't say any more than that. You always say things like that to women? No, only to girls. Don't be silly. I'm not a girl. You can see how old I am. 
Well, you're a very nice old girl. What? No. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you know, you've got your arm around me. What? What were you doing? You mustn't do that. <laughs> well, I'm afraid I must go back to the house. Your, your husband's fishing, you say? Yes, thank goodness. Oh. Hmm. Can uh, one see much of your house from the river? No, it's quite hidden by the trees. Oh, really? And a very good arrangement. Mm -hmm. I don't wish to discuss the matter any further. All I want to say is that if I'd been in your position, I should have refrained from being abusive. I've argued quite enough. Kindly get off my property. All right, all right. But one moment. When you came to speak to me, you went along there. Certainly, I went up there and crossed the bridge. Ah, then if you crossed the bridge, you went on my side of the post and you were dressing yourself. Poor, I merely stepped over the bridge. And am I going to be rude to you about it like you were to me? Certainly not. If you want to use my bridge, use it. It's a recognized privilege here. Of course it is. So you go over my bridge, onto my property, whatever you like. That's quite understood. By all means. The only little point is that if I catch you doing it, I'll kick you into the water. So good day to you. Come in. It's all right. It's more and more right. It's lovely. I say, what a perfect, charming and delightful place. <laughs> and what a lot of nice things you've got. I, I, I mean these. My husband's a collector of bronzes. Oh, is he really? <laughs> Why? Well, he likes them. Oh, I see. Some of them are very old. Oh, really? Well, why didn't he get some new ones? <laughs> Eileen! You do what? Oh, I, I beg your pardon. Your little girl. Yes, I've heard about her. Where is she? I love children. <laughs> What's up? Great Scott, why didn't you tell me this before? I tell she's beautiful. This is Eileen, my stepdaughter. Oh, step. Yes, I was going to say, she isn't very much like you. Who's your friend, Barbara? I haven't the slightest idea. My name's Sidney Rowley. I'm the nephew of, uh, of my uncle. Oh, indeed, and who is he? He's, uh, he's fishing. They've taken the cottage. Yeah. And don't you fish, too? Well, not like that. Is that why you called me, Barbara? To meet Mr. Rowley? No. I just wanted to know what you were doing this morning. Oh, nothing in particular. Why, Joe, that's funny. I'm doing nothing either. We might do it together. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you have any luck, sir? Oh, I've just been having a look around, but I think I've found the best place to fish when I get the chance. Oh, uh, there's one thing I didn't mention, sir. I may have to leave you for tonight. What? Why, I, I, I didn't disturb you at all last night, did I? Oh, no, sir. No, I didn't recall anything of that sort. It isn't that, sir. I wouldn't complain. Oh? Then why the deuce do you want to clear out? I may be called to the side of my daughter, sir. Make no bones. She's expecting in the village. Expecting? How is she? Well, there's nothing to do with me that I know of. The doctor foresaid tomorrow, and my family's noted for punctuality. Well, who's going to look after us? I'll arrange for another lady to come in my place, sir. But I'm expecting my secretary here tomorrow. Oh, but you didn't intend her to stay here, sir. It isn't a her, it's a he, Duck. What, sir? I said his name's Duck. Oh, but there's only your double bedroom, sir, and the young gentleman's, and mine. Mr. Duck won't sleep here. If he has to stay, he can go to the village. Yes, sir. Unless, of course, he shares your double bed. No, thank you. By gad, he'd better not try. <laughs> you often say things like that to girls. I have never said such a thing before. You see, you're so different. Barbara says I'm extremely ordinary. Barbara? My stepmother. Oh, her, yes. Well, I suppose she's jealous of you. Well, she may be a little jealous over you. Oh. You see, she doesn't get many young men coming around nowadays. No, I don't suppose she does. I mean, because the house is so lonely. Yes. And there's so few men about the place. There aren't any others besides me, are there? No. Oh, well, I'm afraid I can't spare her much of my time. <laughs> oh, but she'll understand because, I mean, she's so charming. <laughs> You'd better come in. And you'd better keep out. Oh, no, but please, Mrs. Mother. I mean, step in, please. I wasn't saying anything to her that, that you wouldn't have liked, was I? Of course not. No! Yeah, in fact, you'd have liked it just as much as she did. Not the second time. 
He said it all to me before he began on you. Oh, but I didn't say the same things to her as I did to you. I should hope not. Did you go as far with her as you went with me? No, of course not, but, but give me another chance. You're just a hyena. Oh, not a high one. You come in here nosing about seeing what you can find. Well, you encouraged him. Shut up. Go indoors. And you clear out. But I, but I can put this right. You can't. Yes, I can. Now, listen. Next time, I'll try and get my uncle over as well for you. How dare you? No, really. He's, he's older than he looks. I mean, I mean, he's younger than you think. You'll be all right. <laughs> what an idea. Yes. But mind you, he may want a bit of persuading, because he really only came here for fishing. <laughs> Will you go away? He's a very agreeable old gentleman. Sydney! Where the devil are you? Why can't you be punctual at meals? Well, anyway, you think it over. My dear Eileen, you wait until you know men as well as I do. I don't want to wait all that time. Besides, knowing father, I should have thought you'd appreciate a man being a bit of a sport. Don't say things like that. Well, how was I to know Mr. Rowley had made a pass at you? Don't be vulgar. I prevented you from being vulgar. That's what's upset you. Shut up. Oh, you come into lunch, dear? We didn't wait. We didn't know how long you'd be. Where's the fishes nibbling? I did catch something. Well done, dear. I caught the sound of an extraordinary conversation. Where? Here. Who, may I ask, is Mr. Rowley? Oh. He's a young man Barbara found trespassing. He didn't mean any harm. Indeed. A bit of a sport, I gather. The idiot. Who makes passes at people, whatever that means. Oh, that means he, uh, he passed through the garden. Is this somebody else from that confounded cottage? Yes, dear. The nephew. But he's perfectly harmless. I'll see to that. Tell me what he did. Oh, never mind. Sit down and eat your liver. Tell me what he did. Oh, so you had a bit of a quarrel with this man, Rivers. Quarrel? You don't think I'd waste my breath on a swine like that, do you? <laughs> Is he a pretty big, strong sort of man? No, why? You don't think I'm afraid of him, do you? Oh, no, 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 no. I only want to know what size he was. <laughs> I thought he couldn't be up to much. Are you trying to suggest I ran away? No, 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 Uncle. Of course not. I only said that about him because his wife doesn't seem afraid of him either. His <laughs> wife? How do you know? She told me so. I saw her this morning. She's his stepwife. You know, second innings. <laughs> I went over and spoke to her. And, oh, boy. Boy? I, I, I'm sorry, I mean uncle. Oh, uncle. A reasonably nice-looking woman, eh? More than reasonably. And quite youngish. Oh, I see. So I bring you down here for a nice, quiet fortnight's fishing, and before you've been here 24 hours, you start poodle-faking about with your neighbor's wife. No, no, Uncle, please. You know I wouldn't do a rotten thing like that. Then why tell me about her? Well, I thought you might like to. That'll do. How dare you say a thing like that? I'm sorry, Uncle. By Gad, I should hope so. You don't think I'd go nosing about the place trying to start some affair with a woman, do you? No, Uncle. I should think not indeed. And you know as well as I do, I'm not that kind of a man. Besides, I I'm down here on a holiday. I only wanted to meet the lady. You'll be going out again this evening anyhow. I shall go out when I damn well please. Why? Mr. Rivers will be going fishing again about that time. What's that got to do with it? Oh, nothing, only that evening is proverbially the best time for that. The best time for what? What are you talking about? Shh. Why, fishing in the evenings. You know, night time is the right time for fish, fish, fish. <laughs> yes. Can I take the cheese, sir? Yes, take it away. Yes, I'd throw it away. It's interfering with our conversation. It's the hot weather, sir. Makes it rather fruitful. I don't want to hear any more about this woman next door, so stop it. She means nothing to me. Well, the point is, Uncle, she means nothing to me either. <laughs> oh, don't she? Why not? Uncle. Don't do that. Oh, a man. A man? Who is it? Come in here. Oh, it's you, is it? What the devil do you want? You, Mr. Rowley, 
Me? Yes, I believe so. Who is it? Why, this blasted fella. The husband. Oh, oh, Mr. Rivers, uh, I'm afraid. I hope, I think. Oh, I know what you've come for, but you needn't apologize to me. Sit down and have a glass of port. I didn't come here to apologize, quite the contrary. Nor do I drink port at midday in June, and I wouldn't drink your port at any time. By gad, I won't have that. This is some of the finest old vintage port in existence. How dare you insult my port? It's all right, sir. You see, he thinks a great deal of his port. In fact, he's absolutely full of it. <laughs> I came here to warn you. You spent your morning gadding about on my premises and being offensive to my women. Women? How many have you got? Oh, I mean my wife and daughter. I merely employ a colloquialism. Oh, I didn't see her. Moreover, you had the brazen audacity to try and make advances to my daughter. His daughter? I thought you said it was his wife. What? Oh, I don't care. It don't make any odds to me. You can't deny this about my daughter. My wife told me. Ah, you see, but I'm afraid your wife was jealous. Jealous? Yes, you see, before I, before I saw your stepdaughter, I started on your... No, no, I didn't. What? No, I can't say that. I warn you. You keep off my grounds, both of you. I don't care who you are. Now, you listen to me, sir. My nephew comes of gallant stock, fighting stock, on both sides of the family. Both his father and mother were fighters, weren't they? Yes. They fought like cat and dog. Shut up. And where you find the fighter, there you find the gallant. Are you describing this person? Oh, well, I didn't come here to fight, but elderly as I am, I think I can promise him a thrashing. By gad, you try. Go on, Sidney. No, no, Uncle, we don't want that. I, I, I'm younger than he is, and, and taller, and thinner, and, and everything. No, 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 we can't have that. If you want to fight, you fight him yourself. Fight him? By gad, I will. I won't have the role he's spoken of like that. Come on, sir, stick him up. Control yourself, sir. You raise a hand to me, I'll have the law on you. Then you get out, or I'll hang your hide on the doorpost. This is rank savagery. You may resent my nephew poodling about with your women, but don't you insult my family gallantry. My family has no need of it, thank you. So you keep your side of the garden gate. And you get your side of it quicker, you'll be carried home on it. Eileen, stop that uncivilized hullabaloo and go to bed. A, because I tell you to, B, because I dislike it, and C, because I wish to be alone with Barbara. You can take it up to bed with you. Nice way to bring up your daughter, driving her to bed with a crooner. Come, come, no need to be broad. Good night, darling. Good night, darling. Good night, Daddy. Good night, my dear. Well, I suppose I can safely go to London tomorrow. Why not? The car's in perfect order, isn't it? Yes, yes. I mean, I don't think you need anticipate any further molestation from the cottage. Good heavens, no. I'm afraid I have to stay in town tomorrow night. Yes, do. It's too far to motor both ways. I don't like leaving you alone here. Alone? I shan't be alone. I've got Eileen and the servants. Yes, but... Oh, well, as long as you're not nervous. Nervous? There's nothing to be nervous of. Is there? No, I suppose not. Eileen and I wouldn't be nervous even if there were. While I'm in London, I'm going to see that girl, Diana. Diana, your brother's daughter. Why? She's written me for help. And are you going to help her? Most certainly not. I'm going to warn her off. Poor girl. It wasn't her fault your brother died in jail. Oh, please. I'd rather you didn't mention that. Well, there's no harm in my talking about it to you. I never found out what really happened. My wretched brother got three years. Fortunately, he died almost at once. And his son was in it, too. No, no. There was nothing against him. There was an accountant fellow, Merlo. They gave him a year's imprisonment. So he's out again now. I suppose so. I don't know or care. Anyway, I won't have that girl Diana pestering me, and I'll tell her so. But I thought she'd got plenty of money. She had. She's blown it, I expect. Anyhow, she might have known better than to apply to me. Yes, indeed she might. 
Well, I'm going to bed. So am I. All the same, I'm sorry for the girl. I'm not. Her side of the family has disgraced itself. I'll have nothing to do with them. come back tonight, but most probably tomorrow. All right, dear. Goodbye. Excuse me. If it's about vacuum cleaners, we've all we want. Oh, no, madam. Uh, please pardon me, uh, but I'm looking for Sir Donald Rowley's cottage. There, Donald. Is the uncle is there? Yes, indeed. A baronet. Down the road, on the left. Oh, many thanks. To give my effrontery. Hoppermo, uh, Mr. Rowley, the nephew, is he Sir Donald's heir? Yes, indeed, yes. Uh, at present. I leave. Well, there's no harm in finding out. Are you going to stay with them? Oh, no, no. I, I'm merely Sir Donald's secretary. Uh, uh, is there any message you wish me to take? No, certainly not. And you behave yourself. Oh, I'm very sorry. I, I had no idea I'd transgressed in any way. I wasn't talking to you. Oh, I'm very sorry. Uh, excuse me. I beg your pardon. Yes. Good morning. Thank you. Come in, Willow boy. Come in. <laughs> there you are. My job, you must be hot after your walk. Have a drink, will you? No, thank you, Mr. Sidney. I stopped at the village fountain and wet my whistle. Oh, how untidy. <laughs> I say, what a large vanity case. That can't be all business. No, I brought my belongings. I think it's quite likely I may have a night out. Really? Well done, Will Duck. I shan't say anything. <laughs> well, I don't suppose I should be able to get home. No. You know what Sir Donald is? It's so difficult to pin him down to business. You don't have to make excuses to me. <laughs> Duck? Good morning, Sir Donald. You're pretty late. The train was late, Sir Donald. Well, next time you better take yesterday's. What have you brought? A superabundance of miscellaneous agenda requiring your attention, Sir Donald. You mean a lot of different damn things that I've got to muck about with? Yes, Sir Donald. Then talk English. If you would care to deal with the more important talk with... I wouldn't. I'll do that later. I'm going down to the river. And I'll sort them out in readiness. Come on, Willie. I'll give you a hand with this, and you can get a nice move on. There you are. Let's see. There's these. And these? What are these? Oh, oh, excuse me. Those are my shaving papers. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, we'll file them back in the bag. Don't worry. This I shall want. Ah, I see you favour the one-piece garment. <laughs> Thank you. I can't want that. Well, not until next week, anyhow. <coughs> Duck? Yes, Sir Donald? I thought you said you wanted to get through with it. So I do, Sir Donald. Then don't muck about with pants. And Sidney, you come along with me. Yes, yeah, certainly. You'll be finished in no time. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Oh, Miss Diana, won't you tell me where you're going? All right, Nanny, I'll tell you. I'm going to my uncle's in the country. But your uncle Hubert? But does he know you're coming? Not he. He'd never take me in. But it's my only chance. Your only chance of what? Oh, dear, Miss Diana, what's it to do with? It's something to do with my brother Michael. Well, but you know where he is. Yes, but nobody else does. And they mustn't, you understand? Especially that man who's been calling here lately. Merlo? Yes, Merlo. He mustn't find out. No, you won't tell me, but I can see for myself. He's persecuting you, that man. A jailbird at that. Why don't you have him stop? I can't. Don't you interfere, Nanny. I'm sorry, but you can't realize how desperate it all is. Desperate? Yes, desperate. You don't suppose I'd go to my uncle's if it wasn't? That, that, that. Oh, that's in the wrong place. Careless. Oh. There. Keep you waiting long, sir. 
Oh, thank you. It's no good your calling here today. She's gone away. I was watching her. Where's she gone? I shan't tell you. You'd better tell for her sake. You're fond of her. You want to protect her, don't you? From you, yes. Some trouble, devilish trouble. Unless I get hold of her today, I won't answer for what may happen to her. Oh. What do you mean? She's afraid of something, isn't she? Well, it'll happen to her if I don't stop it. Now, where's she gone? She's gone to her uncle in Sussex. Oh. Him? He'll do nothing to help her. I know he won't. So that's where she is. All right. No, I won't have it. You keep clear of that house. I won't have you mixing with that kind of man's women. I don't want to mix. I only want to see the little girl. Then why did you start on the mother? I did that before I knew I could better myself. Walking into a place and making an advantage to the first woman you meet? It's disgraceful. You're sure to find a better one if you have a good look. If you please, sir. What? My daughter, sir. What the doctor foretold is nearly correct. Tonight is when he's said to be pointed to. What for? Shut up. Oh, then I suppose you've got to go. Yes, sir. But Mrs. Peacock, who brought the news, will stay and look after you. Mrs. Peacock? I suppose she'll be all right with Mr. Duck. Stop that. Sorry. Is she here now? Yes, sir. I'll bring her to see you. All right, and then clear the table. Duck? Yes, Sir Donald? Clear all this stuff off of here. I want to sit down. What? I beg your pardon, Sir Donald. This is Mrs. Peacock, sir. Sydney? Oh, I think we should be all right for one night by ourselves. Yes, I don't suppose she'd care to be separated from Mr. Peacock. Oh, I'm used to being left alone at night. Yes, I can quite understand that. You keep quiet. Hmm? Mrs. Fenton, come here. You'll be here first thing in the morning? Oh, yes, sir. Leastways, I hope so. Then perhaps we can manage all right. Thank you very much, all the same. Now, wait a minute. Better give her this, because perhaps it's a bit of a disappointment. Disappointment? Who to? You keep your mouth shut. Out. Duck? Yes, Sir Donald? What the devil do you think you're doing down there? You don't suppose I'm going to lie down and sign them on my stomach, do you? No, Sir Donald. Oh, very well, thank you. Good heavens, Baker. What do you think? That wretched girl's gone down to my house. She'll try and borrow money off my wife. I must go back there. You can't do that today, sir. You've got to dine with those people and it's most important. Yes. But I'll motor back there late tonight, then I'll catch her there and turn her out. You seem very vindictive about it. Vindictive? If you knew what I'd suffered from her branch of the family. Sponging, intriguing vixen. Well, are you ready? Yes, indeed, Sir Donald. What's the first thing? Well, this matter brooks no delay. Your tenant, Mrs. Meek, petitions in the matter of her leasehold, as her effects are being requisitioned by the bailiffs. You mean old Mother Meek can't stump up her rent because she's got the stags in? Yes, Sir Donald. Then talk English. Uncle! Hello. The trout are rising like skink. The devil they are. I'll be with them in a minute. You'll have to wait. But I shall miss my only train, Sir Donald. You can stay here the night. We've got the housekeeper's bed for you now. Oh. Yeah. Telegram doesn't mean that Merla will follow you here. It does. Well, he's not here yet. If he came by the evening train, he should be here now. Can't we get protection from the police? Of course not. If the police knew what Diana told us, that's what Merla's threatening, to tell the police. He knows I'm in his power. He's free to terrify me. He does, too. In what way? He's a devilish, inhuman creature. A dreadful, cruel thing, like a snake. Like a snake. And he may be lurking out there now. Come away from that window. Please forgive me for coming here. I didn't know he'd follow me. No, we are glad you did. At least we'd like to help you. There's a man coming here like a snake. Like a snake? He looks like a snake. And he acts like a snake. Oh, I'm not going to stay here tonight. 
But what can he do? Come here and petrify us, that's all. He'll inform about Michael tomorrow unless he gets that money tonight. Nonsense. He wouldn't frighten me like that. Wouldn't he? Look, I had this yesterday. A newspaper cutting about that girl they found murdered with a ghastly picture of it. I can't go out in the street without hearing his voice at my shoulder. I'm watching you. I'm watching you. He does, too. Sometimes I look up, and there's his face at a window. For months now, he's been haunting me in queer, uncanny ways. Hello? Hello? Who's there? Who's there? That's very strange. No answer. I won't stand it. There are men at that cottage and I'm going to get them. I won't have you get those men. Your father would forbid it. I don't care. I'm going to get those men and no one shall stop me. Doc? Yes, Sir Donald? How much longer are you going to be doing that? It's all right, Sir Donald. I'm pleased to do it. Oh, well, if you're pleased to do it, Ducky, that's all we ask. <laughs> Well, anyone can see you like it because you take such a hell of a time doing it. I've shelved all the clean crockery, and now I've very nearly done the dirty. I wish I could find something to do. I'm a jolly good mind to take the car out. What for? Well, for something to do. Well, I'm quite happy to sit here. Yes, but you drink. What? Well, I mean, Uncle, you, you're well occupied. So is Duck. He's in there doing his dirty duty. It's all so quiet here. I want, I want a little excitement. What's that? Well, go and see. Shall I? Yes. Oh, you're here. I'm so glad. You? By George, so am I glad. Oh, do come over to the house, you and your uncle. We'd love to, but your father. Father's away. There's only Barbara and myself and a girl cousin in the house. That's awfully sporting of you. It isn't that. Oh, it is. I'll come anyway. But we want your help, your protection. Protection? What from? From a man, a dreadful man. But we don't know if he's coming. We think he is. What, coming to stay? No, no, to sort of haunt us. Haunt? Yes, it's ghastly. Even now he may be lurking about the grounds or peering in at windows. Oh, do come over. No, you come in here. But we've got to get a move on. Well, come in here and see if you can get a move on, Uncle. Why, Santo, this little girl has come here. Yes, I can see that. Oh, please help me. No, it's all right. I heard. And if ladies are in distress, they can't do better than turn to the rollies. Yes, both of us. Oh, thank you. Right. But let me tell you this. Only yesterday, your father said to me, my family don't need your gallantry, thank you. He said that to me face. But that would be reasonable. Perhaps he didn't realize he was doing it to your face. Oh, never mind what my father says. I tell you, this poor girl is being persecuted. What girl? My cousin. This man's after her. Yes. What for? Because she's the sort of girl a man like that would go for. She's young and pretty and has no one to look after her. No. But can't she look after herself? No, she has no means of resisting. What? Duck? Yes, Sir Donald? Keep an eye on the place. I'm going out. How long for, Sir Donald? Very likely all night. Come on. This man Merlot came out of jail. He came and saw me and I gave him some money. What for? He said he had a packet of documents that incriminated my brother. Oh, just a common blackmailer. He's not. He's worse than that. He's like a nightmare. A slow, fiendish, deadly nightmare. So that's why you came down here? Just for protection? Yes. Well, if he turns up here, we'll soon find out whether he's human. Yes, but suppose he isn't human. Oh, don't be a damn fool. Well... Let's all go back to the cottage. What's that? Oh. oh! You're nervous, my dear. Now, if I might suggest it, what she wants is a good whiskey and soda. No, not for me, thank you. Yes, you do, my dear. In fact, I think one would do us all good. I'll get you one. Shall I help? No, it's only over here. You'll want another siphon. There's one in the kitchen. Ada and Grace will have gone to bed. That's very brave of Ada and Grace. Well, you better put this little girl under my protection. There may not be anything to protect her from. Oh, I'm sure we'll see to that. Yes. What? Oh, that? Quick, Uncle, go and see. The maids have gone. They left a note. They overheard us talking and got scared. Well, this is a nice thing. The cook sleeps out. There isn't a servant in the house. 
Well, all the better, perhaps. We don't want a lot of servants about, because we'll come and sleep here if you like. That's impossible. Is it? Yes. Pity. Uncle, I've got it. Come here. We can take this girl to the cottage. She can sleep in Duck's bed. Eh? Yes. Duck can sleep in the kitchen or anywhere. Certainly not. That's a nice gallant way to treat a lady. She shall have my room. Oh, and you? I'll sleep in Duck's bed. Oh, and Duck? Well, he can duck down anywhere he can. <laughs> I'll see to her, Sydney, and you stay with these ladies until the danger's over. That's right, I'll stay with you, then there won't be any danger. Quite right, my boy, spoken like a rolly, but in any case, you needn't hurry back. Give me a bag, my dear. You're being awfully good. Well, damn it, I haven't been able to help it yet. There you are, my dear. All safe and sound. How do you feel now? Lovely. Oh, you needn't tell me that. You're bound to feel lovely because you look lovely. You're a very lovely girl. Come on, let's sit down over here for a minute where we shan't be disturbed. Oh, just a moment. Duck? No, it's all right. He's gone to bed. Who's Duck? Only my secretary. You needn't be afraid of him. Even if he were dangerous, he's so dilatory, he'd never get anywhere. <laughs> well, do you mind if I go straight to bed? Oh, certainly, my dear, if you'd rather. Come on, I'll take you up to my room. But won't you have a glass of port before you go, just to make you feel rosy and cosy? No, thank you. But don't let me stop you. No, thank you, my dear. I won't take any more. Come on, then. I'll bring you back. Go on, my dear. That's right. Straight up the stairs. Go on, I'll be after you. You needn't try to explain, Mr. Rowley. I quite understand. And I don't mind your seeing Eileen. Well, that's very, very good of you, because she's so nice to see you. <laughs> well, don't sit up too long. I'm going to bed. You're not going up there alone, Barbara. Why not? You don't really imagine this haunting, half-human thing is lurking about the place, do you? No, but I've got an awful, creepy sort of feeling that he might be. Haven't you? He'd better not be. You'd better not be. I shall be coming out there soon. <laughs> so I do go to bed now. Well, if Eileen isn't up in ten minutes, I'll come down and turn you out. <laughs> She's really very nice, isn't she? Yes, but don't let's talk about her now. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I don't mean she's as nice as you are. Oh, I don't mean that. It's this thing. Oh, it's got on your nerves. Hasn't it on yours? Not in the least. <laughs> I'm afraid of nothing. <laughs> what can I do to encourage you? You might go and have a look in the grounds. In the grounds? Oh, no, no, no. I, I don't think you ought to be left alone. Let's sit here and talk of nicer things. It's turned colder, hasn't it? Oh, has it? Oh, yes, so it has. Good night. <laughs> Good night. And in the morning, I'll telephone my lawyers and have them warn this fellow off. Thank you. You're very kind. Oh. No. <laughs> now, do you mind if I get undressed? Not in the least, my child. You go ahead. Now, uh, let me think. What else was it that I wanted? It's wonderful being here with you. It makes me forget that dreadful fright. I'm sure it won't come on again after I've gone. No, not so badly, anyhow. Good night. Good night, my child. You uh, won't be nervous in the night. No, I don't think so. Good night. Good night, my dear. Don't hesitate to call me if you are. Thank you. Good night. Good night, my pretty. Now slip your things off and pop into bed. <laughs> yes, I'm just going to. Good night. Good night. <laughs> You, there was something else I wanted. What is it? Dash. I've forgotten it again. But perhaps I'll think of it later on. Good night, you rascal. Good night. Good night. Yes. Perhaps I'd better go to bed. Duck! 
Yes, Sir Donald? Oh, so you've gone and got into this bed, have you? Yes, Sir Donald. This is the housekeeper's bed into which I understood I was to get. I dare say you did, but well, that's very easily altered. Well, that's what my mother always told me. But don't you think it's best for a girl to know all about the man she's going to marry? No fear. <laughs> Otherwise, she wouldn't marry him. <laughs> bed, Eileen, dear. Oh. It's very late. Yes, nothing can happen now, I'm afraid. <laughs> all right. Come up to me soon, Barbara. Good night, Mr. Rowley. And thank you for coming here. Oh. Good night, until later this morning. <laughs> I'll let you out. Oh, thank you. You know your way. It's round the front of the house and onto that path. Yes, I know, thanks. Well, good night. Good night. Good night, little girl. Oh, she's gone. Oh, so I will too. Well, good night again. And thank you for anything you might have done. Mrs. Rivers, that's just the inconvenient fact of the matter. Well, you're wrong. The girl's not here. Indeed. That young man left here just now and hurried back to warn you. If you don't go away, I'll call him. <laughs> Judging by his looks, that's rather an empty threat. You send that girl here or I'll find her myself. You won't, so you needn't think so. You may bully her, but you won't bully me, so you needn't try. Well, we'll see. Did you see that? I did that. Did you mean it to hit him? No, I, I didn't mean to do anything. Is he dead? I don't know. I say, I say, listen, please. Hey, are you all right? Or are you dead? It's hard to say. He looks just the same as he did before. What can we do? Send for a doctor. We can't tell the police. No, no, fear. I, I may have killed him. We can't tell anybody without saying why he was here. Don't keep on about telling people. Well, we must do something. Yes, I know, I know, but what? This is a nice situation. And Duck. Yes, Sir Donald? You'd better try the sofa in the sitting room. Thank you, Sir Donald. And Duck. Yes, Sir Donald? Don't make a noise trying it. No, Sir Donald. And Duck. Well, answer, can't you? Yes, Sir Donald. Go to Mr. Sidney's room and see if he's in. And if he is, you needn't come and tell me. And if he's not? Well, how the devil can you come and tell me he's in if he's not? Thank you, Sir Donald. And Duck. Yes, Sir Donald? Don't keep walking away when I'm talking to you. Well, I beg your pardon, Sir Donald. Well, don't do it, that's all. That'll do. Go away. Thank you, Sir Donald. Good night, Sir Donald. Don't keep talking. Good night to you. And duck. Yes, Sir Donald? Don't be put out with me. I'm afraid I get a little terse with you sometimes. Oh, no, Sir Donald. Yes, I do. But I think you're a very fine fella. A hell of a fine fella. A finer fella never knocked a neck off a bottle. I don't know what I should do without you. Oh, thank you, Sir Donald. That'll do. Go away. Get out. And duck! Obstinate little poop. Mr. Sidney? Oh. 
So that's your idea, is it? No, Sir Donald. I didn't mean it. I didn't know where to go. Well, I'll show you that. Yes, Sir Donald. And if I catch you at that game again, I'll scalp you. My poor child. I'm so sorry I screamed. I'm so nervous. Yes, I can see your little heart beating. Oh, I'm sure you can't do that. Can't I? Pity. I think I'd better sit with you for a little while. I'd much rather you went back to your room. Would you? That's too bad. Still, pop into bed and don't be frightened. Nobody else will come near you tonight. I'll see to that. Do you hear that? He's not dead yet, anyhow. Thank goodness. Then we can get rid of him. Yes, but how? It's no good telling him to go. Can't you take him away and dump him somewhere? That's a good idea. I go to the cottage and get the car, and then we drive to some nice quiet spot and dump him. You stay here and guard him. I'll go to the cottage and get your uncle to bring the car. But uncle may not like that. But you can't go like that, Barbara. Why not? It's quite warm. And I don't mind his uncle seeing me like this. No, and he won't mind that part of it. Ah! Oh, what was that? Oh, blast. Quick, I want the thing in Bob. No, no, madam, please. It's most important. Where is he? Upstairs. I don't think he'd care to be disturbed. He's got to be. Open the door. Oh, dear. I knew I'd better not stay here. Sir Donald. Sir Donald. Sir Donald. What? Sir... Up for our own. Come here, my beauty. Got her. Oh, look out. Don't. It isn't that. I'm not. Eh? You? Duck? What the devil do you think you are doing? Oh, oh. Oh, I'm not afraid now. No, and even if he comes too, he won't be able to do a thing. He'll never know you did it. No. I wouldn't care if he did know. It'll show him the sort of fellow he's up against. So will you please see to it at once? Well, it's a blasted nuisance, but I suppose there's only one thing to be done. We must get the car out and cart the body away. Duck? Yes, Sir Donald? Did you hear that? Oh, you wish me to participate, Sir Donald. Well, what the deuce do you think you're here for? I'll put some clothes on while you get the car out of the garage. Very good, Sir Donald. Wait a minute. You can't go out like that, looking like a nigger minstrel who's lost his banjo. Get your trousers and put them on in the garage. Yes, Sir Donald. You'll be careful what you do with Merlo, won't you? Careful? Well, get him away. That's the only thing. He may get better and make trouble. He won't get better while I'm looking after him. Well, I'll go and get dressed. You'd better get back to bed. So had you. I can't go to bed with corpses lying about my hall. I must wait. Oh! oh the papers. Those papers that incriminate my brother. He'll have those in his pocket. How do you know? He's certain to. We can get them. Well, tell Sir Donald to look. Merlo may recover, but there he is lying insensible. If only we could get them now. It's a wonderful chance. You mean you want me to go back and get them? Yes, or tell Mr. Rowley to. Without those papers, Merlo's harmless. Oh, dear. Very well. I'll go. Yes, do, do. Hurry. They ought to be here pretty soon. They won't come this way. If they're bringing the car, they'll have to come round by the road. Oh, yes, of course. Well, let's go out and meet them. I suppose he isn't dead all the time. Oh, don't. Oh, well, you needn't panic, my dear little girl. The man's perfectly harmless now. I've knocked him out once, I can knock him out again. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Keep still. Oh! And you keep quiet. Good evening. I, I, I'm glad, glad you're better. Get in there, both of you. Yes, certainly. It's more comfortable inside. Get in? Yes. Oh, uh, uh, rather. Oh. You threw that thing at me and knocked me out. Oh, he didn't mean to hit you. Then why did he boast about it? Because I said I'd knock you out again, and I meant it. No, don't go for him. It's all right. I'm only warning him. It takes a good deal to knock me out, but I get over it quickly and very thoroughly. Yes, yeah, so I see, sir. I, I congratulate you. Uh, where's that young lady I came to see? Well, I'm afraid she's out. Ah! Then she did come here. Oh, oh, did I say that? 
Well, she isn't here now. Yes, she is. Where? Stop that. You what must, room? You mustn't do that. Stop that, please. Oh, you brute. Let him alone. Let him alone. Yes. I'm not going to stand any nonsense. Tell me where she is or I'll break your arm. Oh, look out. You're hurting me. Let me go. I'll show you what sort of a man I am. Uh, you will, oh. will you? Yeah. Are you hurt? No, I only slipped. Let me get at him. Oh, there he is. Well, do you want any more? I'll have a look around myself. You'd better stay here where you're safe. Oh. He's locked the door. The thunk. We can get out of the window and go for help. <laughs> what was that shot? Duck! What the hell are you doing making a noise like that? The engine backfired, Sir Donald. Well, haven't you ever driven a car before? Yes, twice. Twice? Then what the devil are you doing monkeying about with mine? Go on, get out of it. Move over. Go on. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Leave that alone. You get over in the back. Go on. Right in the back. Over you go. Go on. Come on. Well, help me. All right, then. Catch hold. Yes, but Diana wants the papers. What papers? The document in his pocket, whatever they are. But he's recovered. I don't think he's part of them now. Can't you force him to? Of course he can't. The man's desperate. He may do anything. I won't have you tackle him again. I don't care. He won't get the better of me again. I get one of those vases in the hall, lie in wait and suck him with it. Splendid. But don't let him get you. No fear. I get the papers and bring them to the cottage. Then Uncle can deal with the body as arranged. That'll be a great relief. But don't do anything rash. I can't help it. It's the roly blood. Now you two get back to the cottage. And door wide open. Very odd. do this. You're the wrong man. I didn't mean to vase you. Oh, it's all right, sir. Don't worry. I get help. We'll put you to bed and when you wake up you won't know anything about it. I hope. Oh, oh. Oh, what have you done? Did you get the papers? Mr. Rowley's seeing to it. But why hasn't he got them now? Mello recovered and got up. Good heavens. But can't Mr. Rowley make him hand them over? He's doing that. Do be patient. Very well to say be calm, but Merlo's still at large. We have the men to tackle him, three of them. And he's already been knocked out once. Yes, but I know what he's like, and he knows I'm here. He doesn't. He hasn't the slightest idea you're here. I mean, he knows I came to your house. And that's where he thinks you are. He couldn't possibly think that you've been brought to this cottage. Of course not. So there's nothing to worry about. Isn't there? Oh, you're perfectly safe. You have a comfortable bedroom for the night. And we'll stay and sit with you until the men come back. And I'll bet that's the last you'll ever hear of Mr. Murlow. Sydney? Sydney? Oh, the fool's gone. Here, yeah, you, Duck. Yes, Sir Donald? Go and see if the body's there. Well, this all appears to be very irregular. And you'll appear to be very irregular if you don't do as you're told. Yes, Sir Donald. Oh, Sir Donald. Go on. Is the body there? Yes, Sir Donald. The uh, body's here. Oh. It's groaning. Well, what the hell do you expect it to do, Yodel? Go on, get hold of it by its legs and drag it out here. Yes, Sir Donald. <coughs> well, go on, hurry up. <coughs> what a time you take. Go on, pop it in the back. I shall require your assistance for that, Sir Donald. Oh, to blazes with this. 
Go on. You get hold of his head and I'll get hold of his legs. Thank you, Sir Donald. Hup. Yes, Sir Donald. Don't argue. When I say hup, you hup. Hup, Sir Donald. Who told you to hup? You did, Sir Donald. Well, come on, then. Hup, hup. Go on, you get in the back with it. And if it attempts to come round, you see that it don't. Yes, Sir Donald. But I feel it my duty to warn you that the consequences of this may be extremely uh, detrimental. Do as you're told. Yes, I dare say. But we can't sit over here indefinitely. Well, please wait till somebody comes back. Here is someone coming now. Where's my uncle? He took the car to the house. Dash it, I missed him and I want him. Why, what's happened now? Oh, nothing. Well, nothing you better know. Nothing horrible? No, no, no. Something rather funny. Well, not exactly funny. But my papers. Where's Merlo? He's gone. Gone? Where? I don't know. He ran away. I think he saw what he was up against. Well, what are you doing dashing to and fro? What has happened? Nothing. I want my uncle. If he's at the house, I'd better get back there. Thank you very much. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Go on. Careful. Don't drop your end. But we're not going to leave him here, Sir Donald. Well, of course we are. What the devil do you think we brought him for? Go on, put him down there. That'll be a good place for him. A nice looking specimen, ain't he? Yes, Sir Donald. A man of revolting appearance. Duck! You brass bound, blundering idiot. You see what you've done? You snatched the wrong body. But are there two? Well, it looks like it, don't it? Come on, we can't park this one here. We must get him back to the house. Oh, mercy, why? Why? Because this is the man the house belongs to. Oh, my goodness, I think I'm going insane. Yes, and you haven't got far to go. But this is the trunk I found in the hall. Then damn well put it back in the hall and don't argue with me. Go on, get hold of your end and hop. Good work, Uncle. Quick, put him down. We don't want to be here when he comes to. Why not? I don't care. But I don't want him to know I hit him. That's why I didn't tell his wife. Well, you'll have to tell his wife. Indeed, why? So she can come over here and look after him. I'm blowed if I'm going to. Right, well, I'll go and get her. Oh, wait a minute. I've got an idea. There. He can see that and draw his own conclusions. Sir Donald. Well, what's the matter with you? Do you think it's all right to leave him lying there? That's where you found him, wasn't it? Yes, Sir Donald. Well, another time, don't go messing about with people. Go on, get in the car. Yes, oh. Well, there's no need for us to stay here any longer. Don't leave me alone. Merlo's still about somewhere. No, he's not. Now, you run up to bed and we'll wait until those two men come in. Listen, I think I can hear the car now. All right, then. Tell them to come and see me. <laughs> I don't suppose they'll need any telling. I'm sorry for Diana. All the same, I think there's something to be said for your father. Diana, Diana! Not another sound or I'll throttle you. You tried to give me the slip, did you? Well, you can't do it. Now, sit down at that table and write what I tell you. Go on. Hello, stop. That man's in there with her. Which man in heaven's name? Well, no, I heard his voice. I'm sorry, but I want you. We want you. But something oh. ghastly happened in Diana's room. Yeah, something pretty ghastly has happened over in your house. What? Oh, it can't be as urgent as this. I tell you, Mello's got her in there. Hello. Yes, quick, break in. Break in why? Is it all up? Yes. Good, well, I'll do up. Well, that's the end of that. And I'm not going to be disturbed anymore tonight, do you understand? Yes, Sir Donald, and I heartily agree with your sentiments. And don't you start pulling me about in bed anymore, or I'll heartily disagree with your person. Yes, Sir Donald. And duck. Yes, Sir Donald. Don't you try any more of your tricks in that girl's room. Oh, that was a mistake, Sir Donald. It was the wrong room. No, it wasn't. It was the right room, but you were the wrong person to go into it. And if I catch you in there again, you'll come out of it in your box. Oh, thank you, Sir Donald. Understand? I take this to your bankers tomorrow. If it's all right, I'll give up what I've got here. But in case it isn't, just write down your brother's address. No, no, I won't. You'll never force me to do that. Oh, you challenge me to force you. I challenge you. If you won't come out and fight, let, let me in. Do what I tell you. Keep your hands off me. Oh. Oh. Oh, wait a minute, I wasn't ready. Oh, 
Oh, this is... Oh. What the devil's all this about? <laughs> no, no, Sir Donald, you'll do violence. Do violence, I'll do murder. Let me go. Oh, God, oh, Rattles, what the deuce are you doing? Look out, he's pretty tough. Let me get at him. No, 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 you can't. He's locked the door. Then I'll shoot him through the window. Get out. Give me that key. Give me that key. Get it for yourself. Look out. Hell, what's that? Oh, good. What do you mean, good? It's a key. She must have thrown down the window. Give it to me. No, 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 Arthur. No, this will be. Get him out by strategy. I'll give him strategy. Now, listen, call me, Sir Dunkle. I've got a plan of attack. So have I, by God. Now, steady, Arthur. Please, come inside. I know how you can get him at your mercy. Well, I haven't got much mercy, so hurry up. What is it? Come in here. Blast! You two go back to the house. Thank you. We're going. Yes, I forgot to tell you. Your, your husband's there. What, Daddy? Yes, Daddy. He's all right. He had a bit of an accident. He's been knocked out. Knocked out? And I wasn't there? Quick, Eileen. Come on, boy. Give me that key. I'm going to tackle that swine. No, listen, Uncle. It's no good attacking him in that room. Don't waste time. He's got that girl up there threatening her or worse. Well, there's no hurry. He's been doing that for a fortnight. We must get him out of that room somehow and ambush him. You mean fight him out in the open? Yes. But how are we going to get him out? Oh, that's easy. One of us must go up there, unlock the door, and shout to the girl to escape. Then Merla will follow the girl. Into an ambush? Yes, we'll be waiting for him just outside the porch. You needn't. I'll attend to him. Once I get him out in the open, there's no betting about it. I'll right. half kill him. That's right. I said I'd give you five minutes. Your time's up. I've handed you over the money. What more do you want? Go on, you go up and get him down. Yes, well, I've, I've, I've been up there once, and you don't seem to want to. Well, let's see, who else is there? Duck! Yes, Sir Donald? Come here. You haven't been doing much all night. You go up and tackle that man. No, no, I, I'm not strong. You don't have to be strong. You're only the bait. No matter if he knocks you down, I'm going to do the same to him. Don't you understand? You're a decoy. A, a, a decoy duck. No, I don't care to do it. If you don't go at once, I'll knock you down myself. Go on, there's the key. Go on. No, Sir so Donald, I'm a man of peace. Do as you're told, or you'll be a piece of man. Come on, go on. Off you go. Go on. I don't want to choke that address out of you. That's why I gave you time to think. Now I'll just twist it out of you. No, no, leave yeah. me, please. Don't. Please. And leave him to me. Right, what are you going to do for him? I'm going to get him by the throat. Get my fingers well in his gullet. But his gullet will be the wrong side. No, you fool. I shall turn him round like that, you see. That's the way it should be done. Look out! With the fingers well in the gullet. Look out, you're choking me! Well, that's what I tell you. That's what I'm going to do to him. Yes, you're doing it now. <gasps> oh, you fiend! Come on, out with it! Oh, thank you. What do you want, whoever you are? I've as much right here as you. I have some business with this young lady. Well, this is neither the time nor the place to transact business. If she wants to get rid of me, she has a very easy way. Kindly get out. Here. You see that? Get out. Oh, look out! He's grappling with him. All right, bide your time. We've got him. That's right, my dear. Come on, get back here. No, no! Why doesn't Duck let him go? She came this way. Shut up, you fool. This is an ambush. Oh, I forgot. Look out, you're hurting me severely. I'll teach you to interfere. Got him, got him. Look out, it's me. Oh, the devil's there. Fire! No. Here, quick, on to him, Sidney. Duck! Yes, Sir Donald. Good Lord, it's you. Why, Duck, I'm here. Come on, let me come over here. Where's, where's his gullet? The papers. They're in his breast pocket. Quick, get the papers. Duck! Yes, Sir Donald, don't stand there doing nothing. Come here and get hold of his documents. They're in his breast pocket. That's right. That's right. Give them to me. There you are, my dear. Oh, wonderful. Now you can let him go, and by get he's better. But he may not want to go. Well, we'll see about that. Wait till I get my gun. Go on, let him go. I'll give him a bit of a start. Yes, these are the papers, and the letter I gave him and everything. Well, you better destroy them. Not that he's likely to trouble you anymore when I've got this loaded. Yes, I'll go straight upstairs and burn them. Thank you a million times. Go on. Go on. You better run. He's a very good shot from here. <laughs> go on, run. I'll give you about 50 yards. No, no, Sir Donald, please. Run. Get out. <laughs> what was that? Did I get him? No, Uncle, but I think you disturbed a brace of cat. 
There, look what I brought you. This'll do you good. Take it away. Seems a pity. I want to know who struck me. Nobody. There was a slight breeze and it blew the pot onto your head. Oh, don't let Stand here talking a lot of tripe. Oh, take him to bed. And Sydney, come on, we'll go home. That little girl might be wanting us. I'll walk back with you to see if Diana's all right. Oh, that's extra good. Let's go. Wait, you. Hey? A car. I was in a car with you and a monkey. Don't talk bunkum. That was delirium. No, I see it plainly. I was lying beside a road with your face gazing down into mine. Oh, that's worse than delirium. That'll do, thank you. Go on, get rid of it. Yes, dear, come along. Tomorrow, I shall know what really happened. Yes, darling, I hope so. Oh, yes, darling, I hope not. Come in. Pardon my intrusion. I think you dropped this. Oh, thank you. Please let me have it. I'm glad you found this. It's the most important of the lot. I'll burn it, too. Oh, uh, allow me. Oh, thank you. Well, all our troubles are over now. Oh! Are you two going to fiddle about all night? What's that? Done something. Oh my! Oh! Look out! Uh, oh! Uh, oh! Oh, sit down! Come on, Sydney! Oh! 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 I don't know what to do! Oh! Oh! Sit down! Oh! 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 Duck! Duck! Yes, the dog! Come out of that! Oh, don't fiddle about. That's no good. Leave it to me. I'll get it out of him. Ah! Don't you do that to me! And don't you talk like that to me! Remember, I'm your uncle. And remember, I'm your nephew. How are you? Well, hold that. <laughs> 